Hello guys and welcome to another video. My name's Mark, I'm an entrepreneur and property investor. But I also, as well as property, although I've got three million in property, and I've probably only got six figures in index funds, but I'm also an avid index fund investor, including dividend index funds. And in today's video, I wanna go through some of my holdings on the dividend side. I wanna give you some ideas of what you could invest in, and also the expected returns and fees that are associated with these funds. So it's gonna be a really practical and interesting video, and hopefully you get some value you from it. If you do like this sort of content, please give this video a big like. It helps me out with the algorithm. And remember, we don't sell any course or anything like that on this channel. We just talk about how we can build wealth for the long run. And because there's nothing to sell, there's no reason for me to hold anything back. So guys, hopefully that gives you a level of transparency. And if you also would like to subscribe to this sort of content, please give me a subscribe. Again, that helps me out massively. So guys, what is a dividend index fund? Well, there are specifically funds that are made up for high income. So a good example would be the Vanguard All World High Income Dividend Fund, and that is VHYL on the ticker. And that comes with a return of about 3.01%. So let's talk about what a dividend is first, why you might want to invest in dividend funds, and why, for example, the FTSE 100 has a dividend ratio of 3.7%, whereas the All World High Dividend Vanguard Fund is only 3.01%. So we can talk a little bit about why that is. So, so guys, what is a dividend index fund? Let's look at the FTSE 100, for example. The FTSE 100 is made of the 100 largest companies in the UK. And because it's made up of those companies, as those companies become more valuable or less valuable, the index automatically sells or buys those companies according to their weighting in the index. So what does that mean for you as an investor? Well, it means that you're always going to be holding the strongest possible hand. You're always going to be replicating the market. Market. And that means that companies that are underperforming are going to be sold out of your portfolio, and companies that are overperforming and generating returns are going to be bought more heavily. And if that wasn't enough, there's another massive benefit, fees. When it comes to fees, because these are passively managed funds, the fees are ridiculously low. So the iShares, ISF, FTSE 100 ETF, which is one of the ones I hold, has a fee ratio of 0.07%. And iShares are owned by BlackRock. BlackRock, the world's largest investment house. So if you look at that, 0.07%, it is ridiculously low. And I'm a massive fan of index funds. I'm a massive fan of BlackRock and iShares, and I'm a massive fan of Vanguard and all the funds that they have, because I just think together those two businesses have absolutely changed investing for the average retail investor. As soon as you accept that you are not going to be an expert stock picker and outperform the market, then you will be able to invest in these with confidence and get market returns, which I think is a game changer without Wall Street taking a massive cut of all these fees, or Canary Wharf, depending whether you're UK or American looking. So when I'm investing for dividends, what am I looking for? Well, I'm always looking at fees, because fees for me are always the drag when it comes to these things. So I invest in index funds, and I invest in ETFs because the fees are so low. So with Hargreaves Lansdowne, you only pay a maximum of £45 a year to hold shares. And because ETFs are traded like shares, that means the maximum I'm ever going to pay to HL is £45 a year. Very, very low for the holding I have. Now, then we've got the fees within the fund. And because these are ETF index funds, they're incredibly low. The iShares FTSE 100, 0.07%. The Vanguard VMID, which is FTSE 250, 0.1%. All World High Dividend Income, VHYL, is only 0.29%, and Emerging Markets, again, a Vanguard fund, VFEM, is 0.22%, very, very low. And what I've done with all of these is list out exactly what their dividend ratios are. Now, I don't suggest that you would hold all of these at all. I'm not here to make any suggestions to you of what you should do with your portfolio, or that they should be equal-weighted, because if you equal-weighted all of these, you would be massively UK-focused, right? You'd have FTSE 100, FTSE 250, all world, and that would contain some UK as well. And then you've got your emerging markets, which would give you some emerging markets exposure. But you'd be very UK centric, and I don't think necessarily that's a good thing. But I just wanted to give you four ideas and the sort of dividends that they're returning. So the FTSE 100 at the moment, 3.72%, FTSE 250, 2.39%. And the FTSE 250 is more of a growth fund, if you think 
about it. These are the companies that are growing into becoming larger companies within the UK. So traditionally, if you're a UK investor, you look at the FTSE 100 for dividends and the FTSE 250 for growth. That's traditionally how it was thought after. Now the high income fund from Vanguard, the VHYL, now that's global. So essentially that's investing in America, it's investing all over the world. South Korea gives you real global exposure for 0.29% of a fee, very low fees, and that's dividending at 3.01%. So a great dividend ratio for that as well. And then if you want some emerging markets exposure, you've got VFEM, which is 1.92%. So if you were to hold all of these, it's an average of 2.76% on the dividends and a fee ratio of 0.17%. So very, very low fees. So why might you want to know all of this? What, why would it be interesting to you? Well, I think if you're investing for income, i.e. you want to put £100,000 in, you want to know how much you're going to get back. Now, I invest within an ISA wrapper and I do take income from that. Why do I do that? Well, because I believe in having a little bit for now and a little bit for later. I'm compounding an awful lot of wealth. I've got a huge property portfolio by modest standards. You know, £3 million is a big portfolio. I've got a six-figure ISA pot, so between me and my wife. So again, a, a big amount of investments. We're currently in our 30s and we believe in taking a little bit for now and a little bit for later. So we invest in index funds that pay dividends because we then get to dine out on that money. Now, is that the most sensible route for compounding your wealth to infinity? Of course not. You could compound better. We could keep all of that money within our ISA. We could take none out and it would become bigger and bigger and bigger. And on the day we die, we would have the most amount of money possible. But that isn't really our objective. What we find fun and what we think the sport of the game is, is to have a little bit for now and a little bit for later. So we invest every month into our ISA and we take the dividend income and we spend it. And we spend it absolutely frivolously. We enjoy it. So we've recently went out for a meal a couple of weeks ago, 150 quid, absolutely amazing, lovely meal. And it was all paid for by one dividend from an ISA. And we just love the fact that this money is paying for our lifestyle. It also encourages us to invest more. So that's why you might want to invest in dividend funds. Why might you not want to? Well, ultimately, as I said, if you're going to try and compound up to infinity, then you're going to grow quicker if you have accumulation units. Now, accumulation units automatically invest the dividends back into the value of the share. So if you looked at a dividend portfolio, which might go like that, the accumulation units would go like that. Because every year, you've got an extra almost 3% going back into your pot. So whereas you might end up with, I don't know, 2 million here, you, would, you might end up with 3 million over here, over the course of 35 years. Actually, rather than just doing it like that, let's do the actual maths. What would the maths say? So let's do a compound interest calculator. So what I'm going to do to work this out, I'm going to use a compound interest calculator. I'm going to start the initial balance on zero, and I'm going to put in an interest rate of 9% on one, and I'm going to minus off 2.76% on the other, and I'm going to do it over 35 years, putting in £1,000 a month. So the first person, let's bring it over. Can you see that? 2.9 million. So this person would end up with 2.9 million. Let's just make sure that is a thousand pounds a month, 35 years, 9% of interest. Now the second person, we're only gonna do, we're gonna do nine minus 2.76, 6.24% on the second person. So 2.9 million here, and the second person, so the second person would end up with 1.5 million. And as you can see, there's a huge difference between those two over 35 years. Now it's going to be incredibly difficult for me to work out how much of dividends this person's going to have taken out, but it won't be the full 1.4 million. It'll probably only be about 400k, and the rest of it, the other million, would have been compounding. So to have the largest pot possible, it doesn't make any sense to take the dividends out. To have fun and to enjoy your life, like I like to, it makes perfect sense. So I love dividend investing, and I'm going to continue to do that. But I'll tell you what, I'll give you the opportunity to lament me down in the comments. Tell me what your thoughts are. What do you think about dividend investing?
investing. Should you take some for now and some for later, or should you leave it all for later? Let me know in the comments, I'll answer every single one. I can't wait to read them. I'm really interested in this because, to be honest, when I was recording this video, I thought, people are gonna be shocked that I take the dividends out because it doesn't make any sense for long-term wealth. But at the same time, from a lifestyle perspective, it makes perfect sense. So guys, let me know in the comments. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys. That's a good video.